When did I officially become obsessed with Chapel Roan? I could lie and say there wasn't like one moment, but there for sure was. It's very affirming because like for years I was like, is this even good? You know what I mean? Like you never really know if your art is good. Um, just kidding. Yeah, I did. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to Tea with Brie. Today, we are talking about an absolute pop girly queen who I'm so excited about because perhaps this might be an introduction for some of you, which I mean, God bless America, God save the queen. But before we get into talking about our girl, Chapel Roan, a moment for the tea of the day. The tea of the day is a kava stress relief. You might say, Brie, why are you always drinking some kind of stress relief tea? Um, because a girl, be stressed. Have you looked outside? Have you looked inside? If you've looked anywhere side, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Now, kava. Kava does taste like dirt, so wouldn't recommend, but it is a nice stress reliever. Also, my tea came with a cute little message today, which says, the heart sees deeper than the eye. <laughs> yeah, no, girl. My vision's mother effing terrible, so. If you're new here, Welcome. We are so glad to have you. This is a place where we just girly goss. We talk about pop culture, pop girlies, all the pop things, and we drink our tea and we just have a moment. We take a moment out of the day for ourselves, okay? So grab your tea and join me. As always, timestamps are in the description below, so skip around as you see fit, but let's get into it. So who is Chapel Roan? Why are we talking about her today? And also, why did it take me 500 hours and about eight different interviews for me to feel confident enough to say her name was Chapel and not Chappelle? Mysteries of the world, baby girls. And I have to say, listening to her music, perceiving her vibe, hair, the makeup, the costume, the campiness of all of it is something that is so personal to me. I just want to hype this girl up. I feel like more people need to know about her. You've probably heard one or two of her songs on the radio or in a coffee shop somewhere. Chapel Run as a person, as an artist, is someone that's very worth getting to know. And I feel like you will come out of this video with new songs that you love, a new artist that you're excited to see on tour, some new music to look forward to in the future, and also, you know, another pop girly queen to be obsessed with. Here's the thing, I ended up smoking cigarettes and listening to Lana Del Rey on my porch anyway. So our girl is a Midwestern bee. Salute to all my other Midwestern bees out there. Yes, I do live in California, present day. However, I grew up in Southern Illinois. And for all of you people who don't know that Illinois encompasses more than just Chicago, you'll be shocked to figure out that I'm actually living about five and a half, six hours away from Chicago. That's where I grew up. So she grew up in Missouri, Midwestern twins, like we're neighbors basically, in Willard, Missouri. As you can see from these pics, honey, it is farm vibes. It is small town. It is everybody knows everybody's business. And growing up in a small Midwestern town, I can deeply relate to this genre of life. Our queen is 26 and she was not born Chapel Roan. That is actually the last name of her grandfather who died in 2016 from brain cancer. And his favorite song was the Strawberry Roan. So I thought Chapel Roan, that is such a sweet way to honor family with your kind of stage and artist name. And it's also kind of sick, I like it. Despite the fact that I truly still am not confident about my pronunciation of it, feel free to correct me. So our girl grew up a little more conservative, a little more sheltered shall we say. She grew up playing the piano, she grew up singing, and had this desire for this like bigger life. You know, growing up with the kind of family and parents who are like, nothing good happens after midnight. But when she was 17, she signed to a record label, Atlantic Records, and when she was 18, she officially up and moved to LA. And in LA, she speaks about it as if like, she was finally able to like, be herself, be openly queer, kind of like explore these different facets of herself that she just couldn't um, or didn't feel comfortable enough or safe enough to back in Missouri. When she was working for the record label or under the record label, she had a collaborator in Dan Nigro. And many of you may know him as Olivia Rodrigo's current 
kind of close-knit collaborator for her music. So her and Nigro released a single called Pink Pony Club, which we love, in April of 2020. Vulture named this song like one of their favorite songs, I think of the summer, about a year after it came out, and called it, pause, I wanna get this right, a synthy infectious bangerang. Girl, what's a bangerang? I have not the slightest idea, but yet, listening, having listened to the song, it does encompass the song perfectly. So our girl's origin story is very much Midwestern girl, feels a little bit boxed in by the small town vibes, you know, wants to go to the big city, wants to change her stars. Who can't relate to that a little bit? Like, I think we've all in some way or another felt confined, you know, within the place we grew up and the family we grew up and with the friends that we grew up with. And you can move to a different place and just like kind of reinvent yourself. Sounds like a Hallmark movie, baby. But it wasn't all fun and LA games for our girl chapel. I think one of the reasons I really, cause you know, you there's like music that you like, but then there's music where you cross that line and you become like very deeply invested in the artist as a person. Like, sure, I listen to Drake all the time, but ask me the latest news on Drake, I truly have no idea and I couldn't tell you. And I don't want to know. I just want to have a line there and I don't want to cross it. But with Chapel, I felt compelled. Everything I learned about her life was so interesting. And part of that is how she navigated these kinds of setbacks that, you know, had they happened to someone else might have completely derailed them from the course. So let's talk a little bit about setbacks. I wish so desperately I would have been, I just would have been on the internet more. So what we didn't chat about before was that Chapel was supposed to have an album come out in 2018 that never came out. Not entirely certain why, but I think the album just wasn't loving the direction of it. So when she released that single in 2020 um, with Dan Nigro producing it, it was kind of like, okay, this is, we're testing the waters again. We're seeing how people react to this like newer style of music. And even though it was like a critically acclaimed single and song, it got great critical reception, it wasn't as like successful, traditionally successful as the record company wanted it to be. And so they dropped her from the label in 2020. A rough year to get dropped, am I right? Later in interviews, I heard her kind of describe it as like a necessary thing and that she was thankful for the experience, but I'm sure in the moment and with the pandemic happening, like that shit must have been pretty devastating. She stayed in LA, but like she spent the next two years like working as a production assistant, like working as a nanny, a barista, the whole LA gambit, just trying to stay afloat, still work on her music, but also like support herself. And then what happens in 2021? Well, Olivia Rodrigo, our girl, releases Driver's License. And Dan obviously produced that song, they worked together on it, and it comes out to like huge, insane levels of success. And the song is, insanely popular right away and of course now they're going heads down working on the album and dan just doesn't have as much time to work with other artists chapel included there just wasn't other collaborators that she felt like she vibed with as much and so having really hustled hard in la her number one collaborator is now otherwise occupied she was like i'm gonna go back to missouri get a little bit recentered, and basically give the whole music thing one last try in missouri the way she talks about it is that she wanted to give it one last big push to see what she could produce. And if nothing came of it, then she would go back to school, change courses and pursue some other kind of career, which is wild to me that we were truly very close to not having these songs. Like she could have easily given up. Like how excited are you when you finally sign to a label and then the album you're making doesn't come out and then the song you put out, everyone, the critics really love it, but like it's not successful enough and you're working as a barista for two years and then your collaborator kind of drops out on you. It's like, this is a lot of shit. This is the kind of stuff, these closed doors or whatever, that people run into them and they're like, oh, this must mean like, I'm not supposed to be doing this or I'm not supposed to be doing it right now or whatever, whatever. And I really respect her approach. She was kind of like, no, I'm gonna give it one last big push. I'm gonna get everything I got and I'm gonna do it on my own terms as an independent artist and we'll see what comes of it. If not, I'll pivot, I'll alter. Yes, bitch. That is some good life advice for all of us right there. She kind of described the music that came from this period of kind of like having to backtrack as very earnest. It's like new music that combined 
the earnestness with the silliness, which kind of encompass both of those sides of her personality. The ballads, but also the tongue in cheek kind of stuff. And what do we have? We have our girl landing another deal with a record label. This time it was Island Records. And in March, 2022, she was able to work with Dan again, and he produced the song Naked in Manhattan. It was like her first release in two years, and it was her first release as an independent artist. NPR described the song as a queer girl bop, but I'm certain it was a certified bang ring as well. Also, she was selected to open for Olivia Rodrigo's Sour Tour. Makes sense, they're both working with Dan, but like also like crazy because the hype around Olivia was so insane. Like she suddenly was gonna be able to play for so many people and expose her music to so many people, which is super exciting. And finally, in 2023, our girl releases her debut album, The Rise and Fall of a Midwestern Princess. And she also gets her Midwest Princess tour. I think it's hard for me sometimes to like respect people who, not respect, but like take people seriously who haven't gone through some like degree of adversity to get where they are and haven't had to like go to that inner dark place and kind of confront those demons and then decide like to either keep going or kind of pivot and change directions. And I think that's part of what makes Chapel's music feels so authentic, but also fun is that like she went to the dark places and she decided like, hey, I wanna keep going. And she talked about this in an interview, but she has this perspective of like, music isn't everything. And this I feel like is such a healthy freaking perspective for people to hear and young people specifically is like, just because you love a thing or you're really good at that thing, it doesn't need to be your entire identity. You're allowed to be like a multifaceted person with like multiple different interests. And she says that in Hollywood, it's like very unpopular for music not to be like everything to you. Like you you live it, you breathe it, you eat it, you sleep it, to just like completely lose yourself to the industry and to make that like the most important thing going on in your life at any given moment. And she's like, no, honestly, like music is really important and I really enjoy it and I think I'm good at it. But she's like, I like other stuff too. I like to craft. I like to ride my bike around town. I like to dance with my friends. I like to make outfits for the tour. Like she's doing all these other things and she has this like amazing perspective in life that like your job or your work, no matter how good you are at it or how much you enjoy it, is not like your entire identity as like a human being, period. So just a shout out to you out there today. If you have a job and you feel like it's your whole identity and when someone asks you who you are, you always introduce yourself by your career. I'm a product manager. I'm a teacher. I'm a police officer. I'm a whatever. It's like, that's only a small facet of your identity. And don't you forget that baby girls, you're more than that. She even said that she might only do this for like a certain amount of time and then go back to school and become like an art therapist or something like that. Cheers to more people in Hollywood being like, I'll do this for a little bit and then I'll become an art therapist. It's honestly the quote of the century for me and I must toast it. So I think part of why people love Chapel Roan, why I love Chapel Roan, why people resonate with her and her music so much is that this beat does not take herself too seriously. I have two regrets. One, not taking my full ride scholarship to an arts high school. Two, not pushing myself to use Tumblr. How devastating. We've all met people in our lives that like clearly take every word that they say very seriously and they're not really super fun to be around all the time. <laughs> like we can think of personas in Hollywood that also do this, that like take their craft so seriously. I mean, I can think of interviews Jared Leto did. It's like, bro, it ain't that serious. Do you know what I mean? Like you're literally playing pretend for money. So it's just not that serious, right? I truly cannot overemphasize the importance of like being able to laugh and joke at yourself. I think pop music in general is like a very fun, sparkly genre. And I know it encompasses a lot of different things and a lot of different types of artists. But when I think about what I want from pop music, there's this aspect of at some point you just wanna like have fun. You wanna like forget about stuff. Chapel Roan, I mean, her songs are very good and well-written, but also very tongue in cheek and like ironic and contradictory and very much written from the point of view of somebody who does doesn't take their shit so seriously. Like who can laugh at themselves? Who can see decisions that they make and be like, LOL, that was pretty funny that I did that. Our queen knows how to have fun. That is truly the best way I can put it. Like what she's bringing 
to pop music is fun and glam and sparkly and camp and over the top and needed in my personal opinion, very needed. Gaga would be an example of like a very camp pop artist. But since Gaga, it's like I haven't, I can't readily name that many campy pop artists. And what do I mean by, when I say camp? So camp is truly like the spirit of extravagance. It's all about like pushing boundaries. It's like the celebration of things that are extravagant and over the top. A more succinct way of describing it might be that Camp is like finding joy and humor in things that are supposed to be serious. <laughs> Our girl's definitely doing that. She opens her shows with drag every night, honey. Drag is the most fun. She's like, what's more fun than drag? And it's true. It's like, what's more fun than these queens getting out there, singing, dancing, performing, slaying the hell out of it, and just being over the top and extra. Like, it's okay to be over the top and extra sometimes in life hot take. Like she makes a lot of her own costumes, which I think is really fun. They're very playful. They're very, I mean, how many times can I say camp, but camp. Also super fun is that she got her grandparents into her hot to go <laughs> music video. So there's parts where she's like spelling out, you guys can go watch hot to go by Chapel Roan, but there's, she's like spelling out hot to go and her grandparents are doing it behind her as her like backup dancers, which is also just really fun and playful and lighthearted and not taking itself so so seriously and honestly that's something i want to talk about like the art of making joyful bubbly light-hearted pop music exactly <laughs> this is why i almost call the album phenomenon but i didn't because of this reason honestly who's having more fun performing and writing these songs than chapel round it appears no one right i am really saying a lot of controversial stuff today so you know what Talk that mess down below. Let me know what you think. But there's just something so unique and so fun about her. The songs come on on this album and I literally cannot help but start dancing. It's like my hips just start to move of their own accord. Like put Feminine Nominon on, which is the name of a song. We'll get into it. I am all of a sudden, like my hair, things are happening in my body. Do you know what I mean? Put on red wine supernova. A girl is trying to do the splits on the floor in her room. Like things that shouldn't be happening are happening in my body when I hear these songs. They just make you want to dance. They just are so fun. I mean, fun doesn't encompass what they are, but they just are fun. I think part of, again, this lighthearted and bubbliness and joyfulness in her music is because her label dropped her and she was an independent artist and she could experiment with styles that felt more authentically her whereas i think the label would have guided her probably in a different direction and so again just a reminder you know a little life reminder that those setbacks in life can sometimes be for the best you know she literally says in quotes about this this kind of setback that she went through that i needed to get my ass beat if I had been really successful with my first EP and that first version of myself, I think I'd be pretty miserable right now, which girl, I'm so thankful that you persevered because your music's done something to my soul. So her latest album, The Rise and Fall of a Midwestern Princess, first of all, obsessed with the title, Second of all, obsessed with the cover. I mean, the looks are looking like the vibes are vibing. She's definitely got a very like set aesthetic in her mind that's very important to her. And she did an NPR tiny desk recently and I watched that and it's truly giving like wig era of <laughs> England, which I can't exactly remember which one that was, but the outfits are so fun. Her band is like dressed in coordinating outfits. Like go watch that video as well. It's really fun. I say it's like synthy pop her music it's like a little bit 80s inspired the lyrics are kind of irreverent ironic tongue-in-cheek she says that britney was a huge like she was a huge britney fan growing up a huge madonna fan huge rihanna fan and that she tries to like bring that energy that gaga energy into her performances and into her music but definitely in her own way i mean she's not like a copy paste of any of these artists she's definitely her own thing but you can tell that she's trying to bring that like upbeat performance to her, to her art. So what are my favorite songs? I mean, ladies, if you've made it this far in the video, you absolutely must listen to these songs. Literally, Pinky promised me right now, you'll at least give them a listen and at least give them a try. If you hate all of them, like truly RIP to me. But I really think there's something that everyone 
will enjoy in this music. Some of my favorites, I mean, My King is Karma. These are in no particular order, but My King is Karma, such a fun song. The chorus is just like, if you've ever broken up with someone and you kind of get a little bit of joy, you know, from seeing that they're doing a little bit badly, their life's not going perfectly according to plan, you will vibe with this song. I mean, Red Wine Supernova is absolutely iconic. This is probably the, my most played Spotify song at the moment, and I cannot play it and not dance. I just cannot. It's everything. I also love Casual. You've probably heard that one on the radio. I also really love California because I live in California now. I'm from the Midwest. Like, ugh. We are just vibing on like an intergalactic level on that one. Love Me Anyway is fabulous. Not off the most recent album, but off of another single that she released, I think back in 2020, and it is really good. A little more ballady, but amazing. And then Feminine Nomenon. It's basically like a phenomenon, but it's like a feminine phenomenon. So it's like a feminine nomenon. She said that she actually almost called the album album feminine nomenon, but she was like, no way are people going to be able to say this word like over and over again. So she changed it and respect darling, because I absolutely cannot say that word <laughs> even like three times in a row. Like some fun tidbits that I learned about the album and the songs and interviews was like after midnight again harkens back to her parents being like nothing good ever happens after midnight and her realizing that like actually everything good happens after midnight so extremely fun song red wine supernova she said took years to finish and the bridge she was really stuck on the bridge and she was like eventually they settled on something that they felt would be really fun to like scream in a crowd. So she's definitely thinking a lot about like performing the song and what people are really gonna enjoy singing along to and being a part of live. Coffee was about an ex living in New York and she was like, listen, we're just gonna meet up. We're just gonna get coffee and that's it. Because if we go to a bar, it's not gonna be good. You know what I mean? If we meet at night, it's not gonna be good. And she says that like, obviously they did meet and did go to a bar and did hook up, but she wanted to just go for coffee. So her lyrics are just fun like that. It's like these little slices of life that do give you insight to who she is as a person and as an artist, but also are just relatable, funny, authentic, and fun as hell. And that's how I describe Chapel Room, fun, as hell. Also smart as hell and talented as hell. So go listen to her. Go listen to the rise and fall of a Midwestern princess. That's all I can say. I'm gonna go listen to it right now. See you I next had week. to get all that energy out of my head and shave my eyebrows off.